Are we live? Yeah. You're live. Oh, okay, I think that was a thumbs up. <laughs> and we're already, we're, I'm, we're, I'm hoping it's a thumb. Yeah, we're already, we're already starting this one off on a good note. <coughs> uh, we're already getting on, uh, we're already aggravating Jess. Nope. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jess was laughing. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, <coughs> he's died, so hope sad. everybody had a good Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. Uh, three day weekend for me. What about you? Three day weekend. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, you know, it was good to be able to spend time with family. And again, I hope everybody uh, raised a glass to all of our men and women who have paid the ultimate sacrifice uh, to protect in this country. Uh, home and abroad. So uh, again, uh, you know, uh, want to thank you know our our military and uh, you know, and a lot of people probably think or forget about this, but you know, I know it was a generally set up for military, but also our first responders as well uh, for you know making the ultimate sacrifice and protecting here at home. Uh, our cities and our towns, and uh, you know, those who die in the line of duty. Yeah, those who uh, die in the line of duty. So, yeah. uh, again, uh, definitely respects. I mean, myself being a 20, uh, 21 year law enforcement officer, and yes, I could say that because by at this point in time, I would have been already working with the sheriff's office part time uh, when I started. Uh, Full time didn't start until the September time. So, but as of right now, technically 21 years in law enforcement. Right. So, and then you with being former law enforcement and also former military being a veteran yourself. Right. So, again, uh, so definitely the stuff sets real uh, near and dear and close to our hearts. Hi, so, Jeff. Jeff, I don't have anything here to say who's on what. So, uh, so you're going to have to tell me who's on here. Yeah. Jeff. Jeff. Hey, Jeff. <laughs> Uh, so hope everybody had a good uh, Memorial Day weekend. And Jeff, hope Tammy is feeling better. Saw the pictures. Yeah. Awesome on Hi, her Wyatt. speedy recovery. <laughs> hey, Wyatt, how's it going? Hi, Wyatt. Uh, so uh, right now, we let's see, what did we have before uh, Memorial Day? Um. Boy, that's... Well, what, 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 what did we have? To Mayfest. 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 Yes. Okay, we did Mayfest. Oh, hey, Dennis is watching. Hi, hey, Dennis. Dennis you're watching. Hi. Hi. Uh, <laughs> we had Mayfest. Mayfest was awesome. Uh, we had our Root and Tootin Western gear on. Uh, yes, and I said Root and Tootin. Root and Tootin. Root and Tootin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Root and Tootin. Root and Tootin. Western thing. So I, everybody looked awesome. Uh, you know, Tammy, Jeff, Wyatt, uh, you brought out your Zorro-ish Zorro inspired, inspired Batman, which right. was awesome. It was, uh, it was funny when we were in the parade, as we're rounding that curve going from, what is that, St. Marie's? Uh, Main Street. Main Street. Yeah. Oh, from uh, St. Marie's to Main Street? Right. Okay. And that curve there. Lady goes, oh, look at Z... Wait a minute. I know you. Come here. Come here. Come here. <laughs> she looks at me. Hey, Jonathan. And then she, hey, John. How's it going? She saw the little bat symbol on my little bow of time. She's like, I should have known it was going to be Batman. Hey, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I had several people that did the same thing with me going, wait a minute. You're supposed to be Superman. Right. And, you know, I had my shirt unbuttoned. So, I mean, it was one of those things that said Superman can go a little Western. So I'd open it up. Oh, dude, that's awesome. Uh, I, I've had several people turn around and tell me I'd make a real good cowboy. So, um, so if anybody, so if we're going to, so uh, I'm looking for Western films now. So maybe I can get out there and do some quick drawing or gambling yeah. or. I don't know. I'll know of my luck. I'll, I'll be at a gambling table and get shot because I'm under I'm under dealing or something. And yeah, I'd be the gambler. Pow! Dang it. <laughs> Jonathan, I, I get, I Jonathan get, I get, on here is already going. Oh, I've got ideas. I can see. Yeah, your boys may get me, but I'll turn your head into a canoe. <laughs> Darn right. Uh, I can see you doing that. 
but no, uh, but no, we had uh, no. Make Fest was awesome. We got to raise a little bit of money. Uh, got to see a lot of people. Got to do a lot of networking for Heroes for Kids. Right. Comic Con, um, and then like I said, we had Memorial Day weekend. Uh, you know, again, I uh, hope everybody had a good and safe Memorial Day weekend. Now this coming weekend. Uh, we've got two things that we're doing. Uh, one of them being, let me see if I can do this. Come on. White light. Yes. We have the 45th, right? Yeah. Like, well. Superman celebration down in Metropolis, Illinois this weekend. Okay. Uh, we will be there. Uh, part of the weekend, Saturday, we won't be there for all the festivities, uh, but Jess and I will be back down there. I don't know if I'll be doing any uh, costuming for Metropolis this weekend. I'm going to attempt to, uh, but I don't know if I will be able to. Uh, but I know... Uh, Harris and I are going to go down on Friday, but because of the event on Saturday, it doesn't make sense to go back down there and then go home. Right that night and whatnot so, so so after after we're done with our event in St. Jen which we'll get to in a little bit right I'll be heading home but, uh, but we will be in Metropolis on Friday. Karis is going to debut her new new Huntress costume and, and so it, honey it if you good. if you would like to uh, tag Metropolis and tag uh, uh, Hidden Gems and Superman Museum on on there. That way we could that way they get a shout out on this. Uh, well, we want to uh, let's go through some of the guests that's going to be down at the Superman celebration this weekend. Everybody you will knows. have everybody knows this guy from right. Teen Wolf. Uh, he was uh, also uh, he was there <coughs> again on Teen Wolf, but he is uh, he played uh, <coughs> Superman in the Arrowverse, and he's play he's currently playing. Superman, Clark Kent, and the uh, Adventures of Superman. Yeah, it's, and a Lois. Berlanti, it's still a Berlanti production, right? So, right. But, but, yeah. uh, and he I guess will it's be not the, tied to the Arrow person. No, it's uh, loosely, I think. Uh, so you've got Tyler Hecklin down in uh, Metropolis. Uh, he'll be there Saturday only. Uh, to get a few. This is from when he was in Small or not Smallville, uh, Supergirl. And then uh, both of those are from the Lois or uh, Superman and Lois uh, TV shows, which are on season three right now. Uh, then you have Nicole Mar uh, Marines. Nicole Maines. Maines, I'm sorry. Uh, who was in uh, the fourth season of the CW Supergirl. Uh, so she will be one of the guests for this uh, for this weekend as well. Uh, then we have hi Donna. Oh, uh, that's Miss Maines. Yeah. Uh, Jesse Rath. Yeah, she was also a dreamer. Yeah, she was also a dreamer. Then we have Jesse Rath, who was Brainiac Five and the uh, and Supergirl as well. So he will be there. Oh, and he was also known and, uh, in, as Alec Tar in the sci-fi series Defiance. So he will be there uh, as well this weekend. So he looks, he looks like Val Kilmer and uh, Amelia Clark had a kid. Uh, he does a little bit. Yeah. Do you think about that? I mean, yeah. So those are the three guests that will be there at. Uh, for the Superman celebration. Yeah. Let me see if we can get to these special guests. Uh, appearing Friday night at the celebration is a Nerdvana yeah. band. Uh, and then some other artists. Then you have the Bluff City Bat Man will be there with his Batmobile. So that's going to be awesome to get to so, see that. See well, there he is right there. I'm going to see if I can get Karis and get a picture with her in front of that thing. Mm -hmm. then, for um, hidden, then for hidden what? What's that? There's evidently a 
standoffs in Metropolis. Oh, uh, and then as of right now, uh, well, Super Ken hopes to see us all there. Awesome. Uh, and then we also have uh, at Hidden Gems, we will have Sam Jones will be there, uh, Flash Gordon. Uh, he was also in Ted and Ted 2. Uh, he was also the in the highway, a highway man. Uh, you know, he was in Walker. As a matter of fact, I was just we were just watching an episode of the uh, older version of Walker, Texas Ranger with Chuck Norris. He played a bad guy. He's played a couple uh, couple uh, uh, episodes in it. He, he's also played the spirit in uh, in, a, in a TV movie that had uh, remember the the lady that was on uh, DS Nine. What's her name? She was the end or something. Anyway, but yeah, he was the spirit. He, so he's, oh he's yeah, yeah yeah okay yeah. So he's been a part. He's been a part of the the superhero genre in multiple ways. He's really, right. he's really into this sci-fi and stuff. So. And they don't have it listed, but they also have Rashad Hammond, who was Thud Bud <laughs> from cool. Hook. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so uh, yeah. he's the one that, about yeah, so he, uh, he will be down there as well. They don't have him pictured on here, but he will be also set up in the Hidden Gems. Was he the kid with the beret and kind of the... The real, the mm -hmm. heavier set kid that, uh, that uh, stomps on the uh, platform and then rolls into the big ball and rolls right, down the ground? That's, that's right. stud butt, yes. Okay. The They're... one that receives the uh, pan sword at the end of the movie. Right. That, yeah, that, that stud butt. He lost a lot. He, he had, he is an awesome guy. I we mean, you can him. still tell it's him. But right. Yeah, yeah. We met him, we met him last year. Yes. Uh, and Great guy. Oh, he's an awesome guy. Uh, sat and had, uh, had quite a few conversations with him over the weekend. Right. Uh, when we, uh, so yeah, he was an awesome guy to hang out with. Sam Jones is an awesome guy too. We've, uh, anytime we've met him in shows, uh, ha have had real good conversations with him. Uh, he remembers us, uh, you know, it's one of them things that he, real good personal guy. So yeah, yeah. Uh, so looking for, definitely looking forward to this weekend. Let's check out Artist Alley that's going to be down there. Uh, do, 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 there we go. We got Trina Robbins. Uh, I believe her best work uh, well, she's got, as you see, it's a long list, so please check out the uh, Superman Celebration website. But I think well, some of her biggest work was with, uh, is with uh, uh, Wonder Woman in the, uh, in the comics. Yeah. So, uh, so go to, come down and check her out. Uh, da, da, da. There we go. She also, she's also a co-creator for Van Grill. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, she's... Then we've got Jamal Eagle. Eagle. Uh, I'm sorry if I mispronounce names, uh, but uh, check out his social media pages. Uh, He's done Firestorm, Firestorm, Iron, Iron Man, Man, Spider Man, Green Lantern, Zatanna. Yeah, he's. There's a he's few good. of his artwork that he's going to have down there. Uh, then you have author Bonnie Singer. Sigler, I'm Sigler. sorry, and Helen Stepinski. Stepinski. Stepinski, thank you. Um, and again, uh, their novel, and this is uh, a little bit of their, uh, well, it tells you a little bit about them as well. You've got Edward Gross, The Voices from Krypton. Well, I did manage to tag the Super Museum, Hidden Gems, Novelty and Collectibles, and Superman Celebration fan awesome. or Facebook pages. Uh, then we have Steve Weldon, um, Walden. awesome artist. Walden. Walden, I'm sorry. Uh, awesome artist. I've uh, met him several times. Uh, so, uh, the uh, angle you're sitting at, I'm sure there's distortion on the there screen. There is just a little bit, and I'm turning my head up. Right. See, also a purity, a purity, a purity, a purity, a purity, and, I, and trust me, my drink is unleaded. Uh, this time. Peter Malonis. Okay, Peter Malonis and Nathaniel Henley. Henley. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, Jeff, got, give me a minute and I can look and see. Huh. Uh, we have, then they also have Jeff Pinkstaff, Pinkstaff, uh, and William Hood Illustrator. We have Matt Scorn. I'm wanting to say that correctly, I'm hoping. Uh, and William. Matt Shot. Matt Shot. Uh huh? No, that's, that's two R's. R's. That's two R's. We're getting old. S -S that looks like T's back here. S T uh, S C H O R R. Okay. Okay. Uh, From back here, it looks like T's. Okay. Uh, but again, Conor? I'm catching distortion from the screen and then I'm sitting behind the ring light. Trevor Hawkins, one of the super friends of Metropolis. Yep. And Sean Delaney, another uh, one of the super friends of Metropolis. Oh yeah, we see him all the time. Oh yeah. Uh, Rob Witzel, Todd Black, who will also be at our show. And Molly Daniels. Who oh, also we know her too. Yeah, we know her as well. So uh, again, it, check out the Superman Celebration website uh, to get all your info on the uh, Superman Celebration. Uh, pretty much downtown Metropolis. You can't miss it. Huge Superman statue. They've got the Noel Neal statue, uh, the Daily Planet Globe. Uh, you got the museum, hidden gems. There's going to be crafts and novelties down the aisle, down, down Main Street, down a few of the side roads. Uh, they'll have a Comic Con trivia uh, contest. Trivia contest. Cosplayers uh, galore. Oh yeah. All, so all, there, there's something for everybody. There's even, there's even rides and, uh, you know. So yeah. Uh, so this weekend, 9th, 10th, and 11th, downtown Metropolis, Illinois. Come down, check it out. Uh, have fun. Uh, it's a fun weekend. Uh, Jess and I. We've been going there pretty much for the last, what? Tessa was like four or five years old. Okay, and uh, so, I mean, you're looking at almost last, uh, what, 20? Last, no, no not last 10, 11, 12 years. Uh, we've yeah. been going for almost the last 10, 12. 13, yeah, so yeah. 13 years. Uh, well, the when they did the, when they debuted the Noel Neal statue was our first uh, was our first family uh, outing down there. So that was 2011. Okay. That's the first time I actually went. Karis was only a few months old. So, mm -hmm. right. Her and her mom stayed back, you know, because breastfeeding and all that stuff. Right. But uh, that's besides the point. That's beside the point. And then I took, I took uh, my ex-wife's nieces down there, right? To, to have fun. So, so we're talking 2006, right? Oh, really? uh, that's what's I, yeah. Years. Let's see, that's 17 years. Okay, Jeff. To answer your question, uh, Tennessee Championship Wrestling live on Market Street looks to be at 7 p.m. on Saturday. Hey, we may actually make it down for that. Uh, but yeah, it, like I said, it is a fun time down there. Um, again, uh, we've been going as a family since, uh, I said, the, the, since the Noel Neal statue was right. erected. Uh, matter of fact, I was like the second, third person in line that actually got to meet Noel Neal. I actually held, I actually held her chair while she sat down. Helped so set up her table. Put, and... uh, put the table up and actually held her chair while she sat down. So it was pretty cool. Uh, I got to talk to her, uh. Uh, that was the first time I got to meet Noel Neal, so uh, God rest her soul. Yeah. Uh, very lovely lady. Uh, yeah, uh, anytime that she ever come down, uh, you know, anytime she ever come down, and would you believe, uh, anytime that I met her, uh, anytime that I would actually get to come back and meet her, uh, she remembered that. Yeah. So that, so that was, oh, she that loved was, her fans. Oh, yeah. She, uh, so, she, yeah. Be, uh, so that was, that was a 
pretty cool. Yeah, if uh, you were a super friend, oh yeah, she would come up and she would talk to you. Uh, she would, well, see, that was before I became one of the super friends. Right. Uh, now, uh, now the funny thing is, well, probably because you well, you weren't dressed as super. No, I wasn't. I was in t shirt I was actually wearing a St. Louis Cardinal jersey. Uh, uh, but it was funny because <coughs> as we're walking down the street, uh, the guy that does the Superman for the, uh, not that Superman, but uh, I don't know if they've got back in. It was, it was. was it, was it Josh or was yes, it the guy it was, before it, it was Josh. Because uh, Josh has been doing it for a while. Uh, let's see. Well, hopefully that pulls up. See, uh, it doesn't pull him up there. I know, I know uh, that. Uh, it didn't pull him up there. Nope. It because I know in 2006, up. 7, and 8, possibly 9, it was Scott Cranston, I think. Right. I think Josh took over around 10 or 11, somewhere yeah. there. Well, it was, uh, no, none of us are in this one. Nope. But uh, we took and... Uh, as he was walking down the street, the official uh, Superman for the Superman celebration. Right. As he was walking down the street, I hear uh, you hear Adrian, Mom, Dad, look, it's Superman. And Tessa, I'm holding. She was small enough. I was holding on to her, and she was about half asleep. Right. So she just, bing, literally gets off my, uh, jumps out of my arms. I put her down, and she runs over, and as he bit, kneels down to give her a hug. About she the length launches. of the table, she launches herself at him and almost knocks him over. <laughs> uh, it was awesome. And to this day, uh, it, to this day, both of them remember. When he sees her. Well, to this day, he remembers it. And to this day, uh, I'm real good friends with the, with him as well. Uh, and to this day, uh, you know, Yes, I, I dress as Superman and I do everything. You know, I go down there and I do the meet and greets with the kids as well. Uh, but every year, we do not leave. She has to get a picture with the official Superman. Uh, that uh, you need to make a video where you show the first picture of her with him. And then and the the I've actually. Uh, a I don't know if we have all the photos because of. Uh, uh, one of the phones died and took everything with it. Well, uh, but I do have the, the first photo. He's actually holding Tessa. Right. In the first photo that well, she was I, I have that. Too yeah, I actually have that photo, and we right. do have the photo from last year. Uh, what was that? I think it was 20, when 2020 was going on. Right. Uh, he had a, posted something on Facebook, asked for people to. Uh, Send him photos of, you know, and oh, uh, you know, I think it was like he made a post of like, how long has everybody been, you know, I've been doing this for so long, uh, you know, is there something, you know, is, can, uh, send me photos of, you know, of you guys with me throughout the years. And uh, I sent him a photo, I sent him a collaboration photo of the first year Tessa met him and the year that, the last year that. We had had a photo with her, right. with her, and it was just like, I mean, almost night and day. I mean, from her being, yeah, this standing, tall, standing, standing, less than four foot tall, to now she's almost like six foot, and uh, it's, it, it is, it, it's. She's not quite it, six foot yet. She's not taller than me yet. But no, it is. It's an awesome time. It's very fun. It's fun, family friendly. Uh, we have a blast every time we go down there. Now we try going down, uh, except for this year, uh, because we got a charity event that's coming up Saturday. Right. Uh, that we won't make it down there. Or uh, Jess and I will be back down there later Saturday evening, or mid late afternoon. Uh, you you said you won't be coming back down. No. Uh, but uh, because of the stuff I have to do, so right? Uh, so what we're uh, but uh, but no, uh, you know, it went from us going down there for one day out of the weekend to now we go down for the full weekend. It's like a mini family reunion, right? Uh, 
Yeah, we've got we've gotten to the point where we would spend at least you know Friday and you know at least come in. We come in Thursday, Thursday night, night or and Friday morning and stay until Sunday morning. Yeah, yeah. So, but uh, yeah, this this year is a special circumstance because the Spring for Down Syndrome right. event is going to be on Saturday, and that's a that's a <coughs> deal that's special to our hearts. So, right. Uh, so we weren't going to miss that. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, for those that are watching on the super uh, for the super friends. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, Dennis and I would love to be down there. Uh, yes, we're going to be down there for the Super Bowl on Thursday night. Uh, we'll be down there for Friday. Uh, now, are you going for the Super Bowl or are you just going down I'm for probably, Friday? We're, we're going to show up right and early Friday morning. Okay. Uh, we're going to be down there for the Super Bowl. Jess, I, and Tessa will be down there for the Super Bowl. Uh, then we're going to go back down there for Friday, stay as long as we can Friday, uh, but then come back home. Uh, to where we can get set up for our event Saturday, which is a Saturday at the St. Jim Fairgrounds. Uh, it is now being held at the fairgrounds because it right. has gotten so big, which right. is awesome. And it is called the Spring for Down Syndrome event, uh, which coincides with, uh, or which is, does it coincide with Challenger Baseball, or how, how does that work, Jess, do you remember? I know they're. Uh, I know they're. They partner or something with Challenger Baseball. I'm not 100% okay. certain on uh, that. But this year is going to definitely hold a big dear, near and dear to all of our hearts uh, because uh, the Spring for Down Syndrome event was brought together and made by uh, a gentleman out of the St. Jen area, or a local gentleman in the area. And unfortunately, when, uh, and he put the organization together in honor of his son. Uh, and unfortunately, last year, uh, his son was killed in a motor vehicle accident. And, uh, you know, with everything going on, uh, it's usually held, uh, this event is usually held, the, the Spring for Down Syndrome event is usually held on Father's Day weekend. Uh, and right, uh, you know, uh, and due to, uh, I'm assuming, uh, the circumstances of what's went on with his family, he asked to change it, or he changed the date. Uh, and right. I think it was originally supposed to be on Father's Day, and he felt that that would be Right. So uh, he, he moved it. So he moved it. But so he moved it back a week, mm -hmm. and which puts it on the weekend of the Superman celebration. And he even told us we didn't have to show up. But no, I told her, we told him that no, it was our honor uh, to be able to go there. Yes. And, and you know, it's an honor to be able to go there and pay our respects. Uh, you know, not only help his organization out, but also it's one of those things that helps keep his son's dream alive. And his son is a part of our, you know, that family is a part of the Heroes for Kids organization. So, you know, being able to go and help out that organization uh, was, you know, when he asked us, when he asked us if we could still make it, it was hands down, it was going to happen. Uh, and I want to say thank you to all of our volunteers uh, that you would usually go to the Superman celebration. Or something, or do so, do a different event. I want to 100% say thank you to all of our volunteers. It's actually showing up at Challenger Baseball, or not Challenger Baseball, but uh, 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 the Spring, Spring for Down Syndrome yeah. this coming Saturday, and helping us and remembering yeah. uh, uh, Mr. Marzuko's son. Right. So uh, that's going to be, like I said, it's it's going to be an awesome. And humbling time, both all at the same time. I mean, there's with it going with the metro going on multiple days. We can get our Superman fix in. Oh yeah, and definitely, then, definitely. And, but this is important, so yeah, we definitely weren't going to miss it. So yeah, so uh, you know, so uh, again, we so want to thank everybody that's coming out for you know. Everybody go uh, going to the Superman uh, celebration this weekend. 
hope to hang out with some of you on the short time that we're going to be there, but definitely we will try to. I don't know if I'll be in costume, but I will be. Uh, I'm still trying to figure something out. I've got to figure out how to grow my facial hair within a matter of a few days to fill. So blow, uh, well, maybe I can do the Rob thing and blow my finger, or blow my thumb, yeah. and maybe. Remember how he does with Ford? He'll right. blow, blow his thumb and his hair shoots out. Right. I, I you know. <laughs> Uh, you can try. I ain't going to guarantee results. No, uh, because uh, I'm actually film, doing some filming next week. So on I got to on the 15th. So I got to make sure that my facial hair is the right, somewhat of the right, yeah, I look, yeah, the, the right consistency of what it was, or the, what the director needs. Uh, I had to shave the other day. Uh, I actually shaved less than 24 hours ago, but I'm getting a good 5 o'clock shadow. Right. Or a little bit over 24 hours ago, so I'm getting a good 5 o'clock shadow. Right. So, um... So you're not going to be able to shave for the rest of the week? I'm not going to be able to shave the rest of the week. Uh, right. Yeah, so, uh, so we're going to be getting... So if I do Superman at all this weekend, uh, we're getting a bearded Superman. Right. So, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so, uh, and for for people that want to ask, yes, Superman has donned donned or however you want to say it, a beard, in several occasions in the comic books. So, uh, so uh, yes, I can wear a beard and even do right. the red and blue suit, but right. it, it'll throw it off a little bit. Right. Well, you can take it. Kind of rip it up and be oh, like... Oh, no, that, that's... <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, uh, from, uh, to be the tattered uh, Superman from War World. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, matter yeah. of fact, that's what that's where it was from, was uh, right. one of the first times Superman had... Or you can do the Justice League, uh, went into the future with Vandal Savage, come out, and, you know... You know that episode. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he did in New 52, right okay. after he did, right after he defeated Doomsday and defeated the Doomsday virus in himself, he come back and full beard. Right. Uh, when he was in, now, the... When he, when, yeah. Uh, when, when, when he would... When he came back in the, in the black suit. He, uh, now, right. it depends. And uh, now, when, I, if I'm not mistaken, the... Now, technically, the ninety, the ninety-three version. Give me a second, and I, I can verify this because I have it literally right here. I, yeah, I literally have it right here. Yeah, when he, the when death he of Superman. Right. right now, if I am not mistaken, when he was brought a, back, when he was brought back. Nope, that's the wrong one. That is the death. I think I think Clark was the one that had the oh. beard. But. Uh, this is an awesome read if you can get it. It is yeah. the Anub uh uh. Omnibus, it is the death life and return of the death return uh, of the death and return of Superman. Awesome. Uh, so give me a second and I can tell you real quick uh, where. Oh, that's the Eradicator. Eradicator. Uh, no, in 93, he did not have a beard. Okay. In 93, he had the long hair. He had the mullet. No, it wasn't a mullet. Superman had the mullet. And Superman did not Clark, have... Or is it a ponytail? It was not a mullet. All right, was uh, it a Steven Seagal hair? No, thing? it was not. He had a ponytail, didn't he? Yes, but that was his Clark. But that doesn't mean he had a mullet. <laughs> well, when you take the ponytail out, it's an instant mullet. No, it's not. It was still it was still long all around. It wasn't it wasn't the business on the sides well, and long in the back. It wasn't that. Well, it, wasn't, it was long on the it sides. It wasn't Bon Jovi wannabe either. Yes, it was. No. Yes, it was. It wasn't it, big hair. And it, no, it was. I have. You want to see it? I've got the proof yeah. right here. He had swoosh. And He's like, always had the swoosh. swoosh. He didn't have the. It looked like it was teased to oblivion kind of hair. You want me to show when he comes out of the... Uh, it doesn't look show. like... 
He doesn't look like he's... His hair is long all the way around. It is not a uh, mullet. I've got the proof right here in well, the... he goes like this, right? Show it. Show it. Show it. Show it. The proof is in the pudding. Right here. Here's a picture of him standing right there. That is not a mullet. That is a mullet. That is not a mullet. <laughs> A mullet is a mullet, mullet is down that is shorter than mine on the sides. Imagine this stuff back here. It's not a mullet. Long. It's mullet. It's a mullet. It's not a you mullet. You can see his ears. It's a mullet. <sighs> see, look, that is not a mullet. That is actually when he comes out of the soup, out of the uh, transport suit, okay. on the dock. That is not a mullet. <laughs> that is a. I need a haircut. That is a. I need a haircut. That is not a mullet. <laughs> okay. Then why so, does everybody call it? I'm, I'm right. I don't know why they call it a mullet. It's, it's not a mullet. mullet. No, it's not. <laughs> okay. But when what do you did, guys think? Do you think it was a mullet or not? It is not a mullet. It was not a mullet. Just because my hair is not a mullet. Uh, I now, have it the Hey. Now, uh, is now he did. Not? Now he did do the uh, mustache and beard. He did do the full facial yes. hair. Uh, when uh, right after the convergence, right, and he uh, uh, right after the convergence uh, storyline, and they brought back uh, the pre-crisis Superman and killed off the new Fifty Two Superman. He had a full beard uh, for uh, uh, several months at that time uh, right. because he was he didn't want to be you know it was a lot, while you had New Fifty Two over here doing stuff he was doing stuff over here in the in different areas of the world okay. and it wasn't as strong either it right. wasn't until after war world that he actually became actually more powerful than what he was during pre, uh during uh pre-crisis right. so he's actually the strongest he's ever been now in the comic books okay uh okay back to this yes we'll have to get back to that yes okay uh, we've got some goodies to show you. Yes. Well, let's start off with the first one. Hopefully you guys can see it. So, Mama, you'll have to... We have our flyers dun, for dun, Heroes dun, for Kids Comic Con. Uh, so, we'll be checking I'm out... Close. Huh? So, we'll be checking out some of uh, your local... Uh, in the local area. Uh, we want to thank Robert Cox for doing our posters. Or for our, our flyers. Okay, kind of tilt it down this way because you have to shine. Right? How's that? No. Make the top. That way? Yeah, push the bottom. That way. Okay, how's that? That's where, right, right there. Okay, there is yeah, our right, posters. Up or just, our flyers. Lift up, up just a little bit. There we go. We can see more of it. Okay. Yeah. Now and then I've got the cool one. Now, this one here is for all of our general admission. It will be available for purchase. It will be available for purchase. This, uh, we want to say thank you to artist David, David Clark, Clark from Red Banana Art. This is the limited edition. It's oh, this is the general admission poster that will be purchased, that will be for sale at the Heroes for Kids booth. Yep. And you will be able to get the four actors to sign the uh, print as well. So, uh, at their cost. Yeah. Uh, or oh, at, at, so, now the VIP poster is going to look a little different than this. So, uh, if I, we still got VIP tickets left, so uh, feel free to uh, get online and purchase the VIP tickets. How oh, is Liz? Liz? Hey. Huh? Liz, Liz Hahn. Hahn. Awesome. Uh, you didn't bring a blue one down? No, I did okay. not bring uh, the, uh, no, I did not. Okay. Uh, so, uh, let's get into Heroes for Kids Comic Con because we are literally counting down. And, uh, so yeah. want to say thank Heroes for Kids is Saturday, July 15th, little uh, over a month away. Right. We're uh, like 40 days or something. Yeah. Uh, so 10 to 5. Early bird gets in at nine, which is the VIPs. Uh, 
$5 entry fee. Uh, kids five and under get in free with the paid admission of an adult. Uh, first responders and active military for free. Uh, and again, I want to thank Villainous Grounds for partnering with us. Our, uh, 39 days, 14 hours. I'm getting there. I uh, want to say thank you to Villainous Grounds, Mary Jo and David. Uh, you guys are awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Mary Jo is the one that set up our web page. Uh, but uh, definitely want to thank them for coming and helping us out. I know this was a dream for all of us, and now we're a fourth year. So, uh, do, 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 uh, want to say, whoa, a little bit too far. <laughs> uh, beneficiaries, Levine Children's Hospital and Fly Me Home. Uh, and then there's our countdown calendar. Jim, I told you, around 40 days. Yes, yes. I'm under 40 days. Under wow. 40 days, yes. Uh, I can't wait. Uh, this is going to be awesome. From uh, what I gathered from people just around town, they're looking forward to this. They're good, good. Uh, I'm going to bypass that portion of it. Uh, oh, and yep. um, our billboards? Yes. We have had people from well outside the area commenting they have seen the billboard. Yes, that's awesome. Check out, check out the billboards. It's awesome. Uh, the venue is at the Perry Park Center, which is located at 800 City Park Drive. Lane. Here in or Lane, here in Perryville, Missouri, uh, there's a link there on uh, on it. Uh, this is what it looks like. There's a map. Uh, you can tap on that; it will give you directions. Yes. Uh, can't miss it. Uh, we will have a cantina this year, uh, and then we also want to say we're not going to go through them, but I want to say a huge shout out to all of our sponsors. Uh, and we still are accepting donations and sponsorships. Uh, so, I mean, thank you, thank you, thank you to all of our sponsors uh, for and everybody that come, uh, uh, everybody that has chipped in to help us make this, uh, that is helping us make this a successful show. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's go to our do 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 do. Special guest, Mark Dodson, guy from the Force Awakens. Yes, yes. He was a stormtrooper from Force Awakens. Yes. Uh, he uh, his main character he is known for is the cackling uh, tree rat uh, called uh, Salacious Crumb. Right. That sits on Jabba's lap in Return of the Jedi. He like sits in front of Jabba. Yes. Yes. And he's also done various voices in the Gremlins movies of both the Mogwise and the actual Gremlins themselves. Uh, he was uh, uh, in the Day of the Dead. He's, uh, he's yeah. done voices of Ewoks. He's, he's uh, yeah. Uh, he's done he's all, all kinds of, uh, I mean, to the point of he was even a spokesperson, if I'm not mistaken, for NASCAR and Remington Rifles, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So, uh, so not only is a regular actor, he's a voice actor. And, oh, yeah. And, and, uh, then we have the awesome and talented Alan Fernandez, uh, 44 years later. Uh, so and now, uh, again, I'm going to say this. I'm going to have to ask him. It's going to be on my mind 100%. Because of this photo, I'm thinking he is the one that goes on oh, to Luke Skywalker at the beginning of the movie. I or at least I'm hoping. I you know, it. Uh, so, but he was the elephant, uh, but he was uh, the uh, Banta trainer uh, because the uh, they used actual elephants for the Bantas. Right. So, uh, and he was their trainer. He was the trainer for them, and that's how he got, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And he's worse yet, he was dressed like this, and he was in Death Valley, and he was she's, summer. She's digging. What's wrong, sweetie? Okay. She was digging at the pillow, scratching. Okay, lay down. <laughs> okay! <laughs> uh, okay, uh, so again, uh, uh, next we have 
Andrew Nelson. See Andrew Nelson. Darth Vader himself. Uh, he's also voiced Luke Skywalker. He's yeah. Uh, yeah, he is. Uh, in fact, he's done more Darth Vader than any Andy actor Brown ever in, yeah. has ever done. Uh, he was a, he did the uh, the original. Uh, what was it? The original? Yeah, it was uh, the original Star Wars trilogy. Uh, is where he played uh, Darth Vader. Uh, he was the what? What? Uh, let me he's see. also done special effects for Industrial Light. Yes, he has. Uh, so when they redid Star Wars is where he would, or, uh, when they had to do reshoots or something, for, uh, he was the one that played uh, Vader. What, dear? I need our print. You need our print. Okay, mm -hmm. why? Even just laid right there. Okay. Because while I'm thinking about it. Okay. No, that didn't work. That didn't work. Okay. It needs to go this way. Because it turned it on. That was books. It needs to go this way? How dare you throw books? Don't ask me what she's doing. Actually, there's, I know what she's doing. There's always a method to her madness. There is a method to her madness. Whether we agree with it or not is irrelevant. There is always a method to her madness. Then we have the awesome and talented man from another universe yes uh we have star trek actor slash boar predator uh actor uh why are we uh he uh also is a uh film producer uh so uh he also has done quite a few fan films uh to the point he's played batman he's played nick fury uh, he even did Han Solo, so don't so he has tapped into a little bit of that galaxy far, right. far away. Yeah. Uh, so still keeping it up with that uh, all that Star Wars stuff. But you know, we did throw the little bit. Of, who who can do, who can shoot better? Is it Star Trek or Star Wars? Well, uh, you know, uh, we also have featuring W. F. Bell. He uh, wanted to come back. Uh, from, uh, we know him from the uh, long-running TV show, The Walking Dead. Right. Uh, he played Anchor. Uh, he was one of uh, Negan's saviors. And then uh, after Negan was defeated, he went to, I believe it was Hilltop, mm -hmm. and became a blacksmith and was also in, uh, also in the arm, uh, 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 militia or whatever it was. For Hilltop, uh, part of their army to take it out the uh, walkers and all that. Uh, again, want to say thank you to David Clark. David Clark will be there, uh, and he will be. What are we thinking? Fifteen, twenty. Uh, twenty. Uh, he. Uh, we want to thank him for the prints that he did. Uh, awesome piece of artwork. Uh, so we're. Uh, like I said, we're very excited to have David Clark at our show. Uh, once you buy the print, take the print over. Uh, he will sign the prints. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, next, we have Delilah Hefner. Uh, awesome little, uh, awesome young lady. Uh, I've actually got to do some acting with her. Well, uh, I've got to witness her acting. Uh from what, from what I hear, she's she's very talented. Oh, for very, being such a young age, she's just a natural. Oh yeah, uh, uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, I mean, she was a blast to be around the whole day that I was on set with her. Uh, you know, uh, from what I gather, she's got quite a few. Even being at I think ten years old, right. uh, she's got a lot of accolades already under her, already under her belt. Her resume, so yeah. on her resume, so yeah. Very talented actor. Look forward to hanging out with her some and John uh, this and, weekend. And, and crew has already started their promo photos with her and yep. getting her started on on trying to wrap up our what we got to do for the show. Yep. So. Uh, then we also have uh, Desi on as Giles. Giles. Uh, yeah, Des. And we call him Des. Uh, I've met him quite a few times. Awesome guy. Matter of fact, I will be shooting some stuff with him 
for thirteenth darkness. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but I mean. Is that on? Is that on the fifteenth? That's not on the fifteenth, though. That's on. Uh, that'll that's be on July. That'll be, that's that'll on be July. July. That'll be yeah, in July when he comes in. When he's here. When he's here for. Uh, uh, when he's here for the Comic Con. When everything's said and done for the Comic Con, well, I'm going to be on. I've got a busy weekend uh, because once everything's done with the Comic Con, I will be on set with Des. Uh, filming. Uh, so are you going to miss the after party? Or? No, no. This will be Sunday. Oh, okay. Yeah, this will be after everything's done. Okay. Uh, he's been, you know, which is awesome uh, to learn. And this is uh, this is where I'm, uh, you know, that's one thing I like about, you know, doing this stuff with Jonathan and 13th Darkness uh, and Bridges Imaging Productions is I'm learning and, you know, getting to work with uh, a lot, you know, uh, Delilah, you know, uh, you know, just, you know, I, it's funny, I'm 45 years old and I'm picking her brain, right? you know, on what to do, I, which right. is, which is cool, you know, uh, but, you know, getting to, uh, you know, Dez, Dez has been, uh, Dez played, uh, you know, the double for Joe and uh, uh, Medea's brother. You know, right. he was in Black Widow. Uh, he was also in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. He just got off set not too long ago from Captain America 4. So, you know, I'm getting to, and I mean, and his accolades is even longer than that. Right. Uh, so I'm being able to sit with him during, while we're on break or something, on him, help, uh, you know, hopefully helping me He you know, it's one thing, like Jonathan has said, it's one thing to play the character, you know, I'm a cop in real life. You know, how hard could it be to play a cop on a film? Or it, it totally different. Well, considering that you're a cop in a horror situation. Yeah, but again, you're kind it, of stretching it a little, but again, a little farther. You're taking what you know when you're... Expand. Right, so so it's one of them things that being able to tap into the, you know, acting prowess of it. Okay. Would you know, you know, it's a different aspect of it. So you know, being able to talk to the people behind the scenes, the other actors. Hey, uh, you know, how can I do this a little different? What would help me do this a little different or that? You know, uh, because. You know, again, like I said, I'm 21 years in law enforcement, and you know, my career's not going to be there forever. Forever. So maybe finding something that you know, and well, thank you, Jonathan at Bridges Imaging, because I never, you know, he tried getting me into it five years ago, right? And I turned him down, and I, I, I'm kicking myself in the tail now because you know, I, now it's I can't wait to get back in front of the camera. Right. So, I mean, I did it one day and I was like, this is kind of cool. I yeah. like this. And I was talking to my mom about this and I was, and she was like, she's like, is it fun? I'm like, yeah, it's fun. You kind of do the same scene over and over again, different, but having never been an actor, it's just like standing there watching the whole thing. I am just totally in awe of how they create the magic. Right, you know, learning how to create. And this is just a small scale compared and, to and, and she's Captain said, America, Winter Soldier, and uh, you right. know, all of and, and so she, she said, big production. She said the thing that is, is you know, this this could be something that could really take off and something you could have fun with in your retirement years. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, actually, that would be great if if if, if it got to that point. So, but. Yeah, so we're getting ready to hit the ground running and and film all these scenes and get get things rolling and and I can't people are going to be coming. I need some money, man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> They'll be like, now that you're a big star, I'm like, oh. Well, no, and now right. we do have one other uh, sp uh, special guest that will be on here as well. Uh, just waiting on her information. Uh, it's Victoria Webb. Uh, check her out on uh, Facebook, Instagram, 
uh, very talented model, makeup artist, actor. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, I, I'll be doing some shooting with her as well in the 13th Darkness series as well. So, uh, yeah, be on the lookout for that because we... Is she uh, the one that plays your TV wife or whatever? Uh, something. Just okay. leave it at that. Okay. Uh, so, look forward to seeing all of these awesome actors uh, and special guests at our show. Uh, let's go to our vendors. Uh, I don't think we have, I, they are all on here. Uh, so please, like I said, uh, the, it's going to be an awesome weekend. We have a lot of stuff going on. Uh, so not only the actors and the special guests, but we also have, you know, very talented people, uh, and awesome vendors coming in, uh, Start, just start from the top. We have the 501st Rebel Legion, AJ's Comics, uh, for all your comic books and baseball card needs. Uh, as, uh, our, artistically Ever After and Astromech uh, James Ch James Chackles. Chackles uh, with R2. Uh, go ahead. And of course we've got uh, uh, Valley's Doodles. Uh, Moving Creation by Pandy Art and the Bone Cave. We have the awesome, uh, we have Bridges Imaging Productions, uh, Castle Perilous Games, Celestia Art, and uh, Chelsea Quinn Cosplay. You know that, Jim. Okay, we got I, Chris Eberg Art. I really think the um, projector is out of focus because all of that back here is blurry. It is kind of blurred up here. <laughs> so, but, yeah, we've got uh, Chris Ebert Art. I thought it was just me, but... Let me see what I can't do about fixing We've got author Morgan Strong Komnick, uh, Critical Crafter, uh, oh, uh, Crystal Lizard Resale. Crystal Lizard, yeah. Yeah. Oop. That seems to be no point. There. There? That's oh, better. Yeah, there we go. That's oh, it's that right there. Who do we still have with us? I'm showing two people, but nothing's moved in a while. Probably I'm one of them. Wait. David LZ Leatherworks. Okay. Leatherworker. Uh, Elf's Attic, uh, Home Forgeries, and Gotham City Collectibles. Arthur Amy Hale, Eric S. Hawkins, Heroes for Hire, and of course us, Heroes for Kids. Uh, Infinity Comics, Games, and Toys, author Kathy Jackson, author Nathan Justice, and Rick Justice. Are they related? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Justin's 3D Prints, Kittles Crafts, The Little Black Cat Company, and author Ellie Mack. We have Madam Coyote LLC, author Jessica Matthews, author Jenny McKinney, McKinney and Toy the uh, Toy the Christmas, <laughs> Toy the Christmas, <laughs> Toy the Christmas man, <coughs> man. <coughs> Quill the Christmas man Toy. Oh man. boy, Chris Toy Man McQuillan. There we go. There we go. Okay. All right. Mr. Wow. Okay. Uh, we're we're uh, all reading uh, well. Author Diana Morgan. Of course, the Fez wearing, pipe smoking, author Brian P. Morris and his Rising Diet Productions. My Big Fat Pool List and Mystic Song. We have Pantheon Games. Pantheon uh, Collectibles. Or pa Pantheon Collectibles. I am sorry. Uh, Pantheon Collectibles. Uh, we have Pence Productions. Uh, who does all of our cosplay photos. Uh, we have uh, the Perry County Ambulance Service. We have the Perry County Sheriff's Office. Of course, we've got the uh, Perryville Fire Department, the Perryville Police Department, Codex Paintings, and Project Dead Fox Podcast. We have... Pokey Frat Boy. Thank you. Pokey Frat Boy. Prop Black. Poke the, poke the Fat Boy. 
Uh, we have Slap red, him. We have Harder. Red Banana Art by David Clark. And we also have Red Brick Collectibles. Okay. Reynolds Comics. Are there Autumn Zabo? Artist. Oh, I'm sorry. Artist. <laughs> Neither one of y'all can read tonight. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Arthur T.O. Sively. And of course, Arthur Kenny says. And then you have uh, Terry Smith's Crochet, uh, Triple Totes, Unlocked Pieces, and the delicious vi villainous. Vi <laughs> <laughs> villainous Grounds. Vanilla, and Wildlife Command is Center. Oh my God. Vanilla is crap. Vanilla is crap. Yeah. Wow. Freudian okay, I am, I am uh, the Wildlife and, Command Center. Let's get out of this before we die. I don't know what animals Jenna and Michael are bringing, so. Uh, snakes, birds. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, they had a little bit of everything last year, I think. Uh, I don't doubt you will be able to do photo ops with their animals. Yep. Oh, let's see. Mantas, uh, hawks. Um, we've also got, um, I don't remember seeing Todd on there. Oh, yeah. Todd Black is also, uh, not only will you Comic see, writer. Yeah, comic writer. Uh, so he will be with us at our show as well. He hasn't made it on our list yet, so... Uh, there is a costume contest. Mm -hmm. uh, children must be accompanied <coughs> by an adult. Costumes must be family friendly. And uh, Heroes for Kids Con, uh, Heroes for Kids Comic Con staff and local law enforcement may inspect weapons and props at any time. And of course, no real firearms are allowed. All metal bladed weapons must be secured in the sheaths at all times. And for the pro cosplay, it must be at least 25% on it. So, Fair to comply with any of these rules may result in removal from the show and no refund. Yeah. And the final rule is to have fun. Have fun. You know, uh, we have three categories. You have uh, 15 and under, 16 and older, and then pro. It's a five dollar entry fee, and there will be a, a cat. It's cash only, and there will be a cash prize. And they will enter at the info booth with me. Okay, with the disembodied oracle voice behind the camera. Yes. So there's a guaranteed twenty five dollar cash prize for first place in each category, but the amount will increase the more people yeah. get involved in the costume contest. Okay. The second and third places will receive the only scrap certificates good for use in the store and online. Right. And there is a copy of the entry form uh, that you can download and fill out and turn it in at the desk uh, or at the, ta at the Heroes for Kids table when you get to the show. Yeah. And we still have tickets available for the D&D. &D. Yes. Oh, is that down there too? I'm not sure where it's at. I don't know either. It's in there somewhere. Okay, it's not there. Uh, I think that's tickets. Could be. Okay, we still have some early bird left. Uh, or, uh, buy them online, they're 16 bucks. Uh, general admission online is six. Uh, and then we still are asking for sponsors and donors. Uh, again, at the door, uh, people want to get in for the fifteen uh, for the fifteen dollars. Uh, we will have some available. Uh, uh, you can come in uh, VIP, but again, we're only allowing. There's already been several tickets. It's already been purchased. So all we have left is if you have not purchased your VIP tickets before uh, the fifteenth and you want to get in for the VIP at the door, you can still get in at the VIP uh, price at the door, uh, but, it will, but it will only be uh, whatever ticket amounts that we have left. Right. So, uh, so and, you know, and those people will get their VIP, and the people that asked for their, uh, that bought their VIPs 
will get the will we will honor their VIP regardless. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Our V uh, the VIPs we've got uh, you know mm -hmm. the ones that have already purchased. Yes. Okay. Those have already been subtracted. Yes. So those get in auto uh, re those get in automatically. Right. Those will have once they come to the door they show us proof of purchase. Per proof of purchase. They get their stuff. They get to come on in. Right. We will still sell VIP tickets until. You know, uh, uh, before nine o'clock. Right. Until we run out. Until we run out. Right. Uh, and then after that, it'll go down. To, and then, uh, well, it'll be uh, the VIP tickets only go till nine o'clock. So if they get there before nine o'clock, they get the the VIP ticket stops at nine o'clock. Right. You know, so after the so from nine to ten. General admission tickets General are the only admission, thing. Uh, from 9 to 10, the door closes. Right. The 30 VIP ticket the, holders are the ones that get whoever in. Whoever right. gets in at, at 9 o'clock, <coughs> that is it. Right. Because those people will get that hour. So if you show up at 9, 10, you're going to be waiting around till 10 o'clock when the venue opens back up for everybody. Yeah, and I, I, I uh, That's yes. That's about how they usually... I, unless they're willing if, to... If there are still some VIP tickets available between 9 and 10 and they want to purchase, I'll sell them till they're gone. Right. Okay. But if you if you show up at 9 and there's three of you and we've only got two tickets left, somebody's going to be standing outside. Yeah. Well, and again, it, you're getting a like a $60 value right. for the VIP tickets. Right. And VIP tickets are only 15 bucks. Right. You get the limited edition print. Right. Well, that will be numbered. Right. You will get a limited edition print. You get in an hour early to the show. And you also get uh, entry into the cafe for free. Right. And a drink, if I'm not mistaken, for free. <coughs> Give me a second and I'll tell you. I just so, closed it. <laughs> so, again, I mean, you're getting almost a 60. Yeah. The print itself is like 20 uh, is, is 20 uh, is 20 bucks. bucks yeah you know so your ticket your print that's right there's 25 bucks your unlimited access to all the vendors and uh, for, for an hour for an hour before. without all the crowds coming in yeah and, getting in your way. and then you have and then you have the entry so you got the ticket at 15 the print that's 20 uh-huh the admission to the cafe that's five, a drink that's five. So yeah, fifteen. You're looking at almost a fifty dollar value for fifteen dollars. Yeah, you're looking yeah. at like fifteen dollar value for fifteen bucks. Fifty dollar value for fifteen bucks. So I mean, it's well worth it. Uh, so uh, again, uh, going to be awesome. Uh, and then. <coughs> I know we had our like... schedule. So we'll do the schedule what we'll do the schedule last. Cantina items. Wanna thank Incredible Edibles, Villainous Grounds, and Cakes Reanimated for all of our delicious uh, treats and goodies we're gonna have. Uh, and again, uh, and it looks like we're going to have Darth Vader cake pops, lightsaber pretzel sticks, and character cookies from Cakes Reanimated. Ooh, that sounds good. Uh, I, I'm going to be... You, you know she's going to bring triple chocolate cupcakes. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, for our drinks, uh, for the drinks that they'll have, Craig Punch, Darth Hoth, Dirty Hoth. Oh, <laughs> oh, my God. Come on. Okay. For the drinks, we have Crate Punch, Dirty Hoth Cocoa, served either hot or cold, and Blue they're Milk, both, they're served hot or cold. Yes, Blue sorry. Milk, <laughs> and the Dagobah Swamp Drink. Yes. And then we have the Ronto Wrap, the Pork Salad Sandwich, and Yoda's Lightsaber, which is a vegetarian wrap. Now, if I, if I ordered that Pork Salad Sandwich, and I mean, my daughter loves pork, she'll be like, 
So you eat it in front of her. I know what I'm getting for lunch. Schedule. <coughs> All right. Uh, now, again, we'll, once we're getting through here, we will we'll talk a little bit about what's going on here. Uh, first off, we have vendor set up, vendors only. If you do not have one of our vendor passes, out the door. Yes. Uh, you uh, unless you unless it's one of those things that you've got a vendor that says, yeah, he's with me, blah blah blah. He needs to have a uh, he needs to have a pass. Right. Uh, vendors come in, set up as, uh, starts at 7 a.m. Uh, now we do have early setup on Friday for vendors. What? Go back for the vendor setup. Yes. Vendors and their helpers will have a pass or they will not be in my hall. Yes. Uh, but Friday, vendors, we, uh, what time are uh, vendors set up? Two to seven. Okay. Um, and then after that, uh, the show floor closes. Uh, and then Saturday morning, vendor, uh, vendors, we will be uh, seeing you all bright and early at seven o'clock. Um, after an issue last year, if there is not a vendor pass on an individual, they are out the door. I, I'm not playing games with it this year. There was a couple of them that wanted to be very disrespectful last year, and that's going to be the end of that. Yes. Uh, so, uh, VIP <coughs> Early Bird opens at 9 a.m., to the vendor floor, a special guest will be available for meet, uh, meeting, meeting with the early bird attendees. So, uh, you know, they will be there at 9 o'clock. Right. So, which is going to be awesome. Uh, 10 o'clock, general admission comes in uh, and the silent auction opens. Uh, and that the silent auction will open at the Heroes for Kids booth. 10-15. Uh, the Cantina Cafe opens up. Um, I see a correction that's going to have to be made. Okay. Because the costume contest registration is at the info booth, not the entrance table. Okay. Okay. Awesome. <coughs> okay. Uh, 9.30 or 8, uh, son of a gun, 9, 8, 7, 10, 10, 10, 10, Yeah, okay. 10.30. 10, 10, 10.30 or 10.30-ish. Uh, we will do a pre- uh, basically it's our opening ceremonies. Uh, our opening ceremony is the presentation of the colors in the National Guard. Uh, and the National Guard. With National Guard. Yeah, national and, Anthem. And national the National Anthem. anthem uh, the presentation of colors will be done by the American, no, the American, BFW. American Legion. American Legion, I am sorry. Uh, and uh, National Anthem, uh, I'm hoping we get to have our <coughs> silver from the last several years. Uh, so we will... Uh, so that will be at 10. That takes roughly about 5, 10 minutes. Right. Uh, so, uh, which is, and the reason why we do that is, again, the same way we started off the show, you know, it's one of those things. It's uh, honor and respect for our men and women who have, who have fought in our military, uh, who have paid the ultimate sacrifice. Not only that, but who are fighting in our, uh, who are in our military and also our first responders. Uh, not only those who who have served in the past and have paid the price, but the ones who are serving now. And, right. And, uh, Both military, first responders, yeah. or law enforcement. If if you're a hero, heroes right. It's a good Right. Uh, uh, Eleven to three is our D and D campaign. There are tickets still available. Uh, three o'clock, the silent auction ends. Actually, at three thirty. Or. 3.30, the silent auction ends. Uh, 3.30, the cosplay <coughs> contest. Uh, lineup will be at the, the info table. Uh, and judges be, will be uh, uh, begin after we after, uh, reach the stage. Uh, at 3.30 as well will be the last call for the cantina. 4.45 will be the con announcements and the check presentation. Uh, and Miss Oracle, how are we doing when it comes to 
money-wise for the show. I mean, what's our goal? Our goal was what? 6,000? 6, yes. Exactly. And where are we at on that? Oh, Dolan. Oh, yeah. Hey, I, hey I, I like asking those hard questions. I know, I know we've got a good head start. We've got a real good head start from what I'm so, understanding. So. so, I would love to see us break through what we did last year. Now, again, our goal, I'm hoping we've hit our goal. Right. You know, our goal is 6,000. Right. You know, but I would love to hit our, I would love to beat our record. Right. Which was 10-4. Right. I would love to see us get like 12,000. We are roughly $200 from goal. Wow. We are $200 from the goal. So... Just even even if a pittance of people show up, we're going to meet the goal, but we want to exceed. Oh yeah, yes, and that's why because it's going to those two great causes. Perigo peeps, if you're watching, please show out and tell all your friends. Let's let's knock this out of the park. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And again, here is the and then uh, here is we found a deer. Uh, the D and D. Oh, hey, there it is. Uh, the D and D campaign. It's fifteen dollars per person. Uh, there are six spots available, and they <coughs> will go fast. Uh, D and D uh, is a fifth edition uh, using D and D Beyond app uh, and uh, characters. Uh, they will have character available, uh, and the grand the the prize for the game. Oh my God, I've seen it. I, uh, I don't play D and D. Yeah, you have. Have I? Yeah, probably have. Uh, I'm yeah, put it this way, things. it's it's wrapped in black plastic right now, okay. where I can't. Where yeah, you don't know what it, it is now. now, right? You can't mess with it now. So it is an <laughs> awesome value. Uh, matter of fact, uh, Robert, who real big into D and D, uh, would love love to be sitting in on this game and try getting this. Uh, try getting this. Uh, so yeah, it's, so yeah, it, it, it's going to be good. Yeah. Oh, uh, so Heroes for Kids Comic Con, July 15th. We are, again, like I said, less than 40 days away. 39 days, 13 hours, 40 minutes and counting. Uh, so again, the money's going to the Bonner Children's Hospital, and uh, we're out of Memphis, and we also have uh, Fly Me Home, which is a local charity here uh, that covers five uh, of our six of our local counties: <coughs> St. Perry, St. Jim, Cape, St. Francis, Madison, and Bollinger County. There you go. So uh, and again, uh, both of these organizations are awesome. Uh, so we want to be able to, uh, you know, the more we the more we raise, the more we're able to help out with these two organizations. So, Donnie, uh, you realize if Super Ken's going to be there, we got to get a picture with him. Oh, oh definitely, definitely. Get a definitely. With him. I know. I, this is going to be odd. This, you know, if if everything works out the way it's supposed to, I won't be I won't even be doing Superman at our own show. Right. That's going to be odd. Right. You know, Superman wearing a different character. Well, yeah, you you've worn Superman every one. I've mixed it up, you know, I've been Batman, I've been Captain America, you know, but yeah, neither one of us is gonna be doing I did gambit uh, one year. Did Only for, for a short time. Yeah, sure. Uh, got somebody asked for somebody at no somebody asked for Superman. Oh I was going to play when we had the uh, Marvel theme. Yeah. When we had uh, John Anderson with us, right? Uh, I did. Uh, when we had John Anderson and uh, yeah. Milo Barnhart, yeah, and uh, Matthew actually, because Matthew was also played in some Disney stuff. I think that was our second year. <laughs> so yeah, I did Gambit because uh, I, <laughs> right? I uh, joked. Uh, uh, I got uh, Matt with the vacuum cleaner. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but no, somebody asked if I could uh, 
uh, they wanted me to be a Superman for at least, uh, so I stayed a Superman until uh, I did a few photos for the, with the people that asked for Superman, and then I changed over into Gambit. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it was, so yeah, I've done I've done yeah. another character yeah. other than Superman at all. Okay. So, uh, but, uh, so yeah, this yeah. will be the first full Heroes for Kids and, Comic Con that I will not be Superman. And, and the funny thing that I'm aware of, as long as everything's together. Because it's kind of a space theme, you would figure Superman, Krypton, you know, but you're not going to do that. You're no. going to come up with your own Star Wars theme. Yeah, yeah it's going to be my own Star right. Wars character. And of course, I'm the difficult one because it's going to be a mashup of Star Wars and DC. DC. So. Now see, now see, I could play off of uh, the Alex Ross artwork of Superman battling Darth Vader. Yeah, you see, that. I could do that. Right. Uh, you know, since we do have Darth Vader coming. Right. So see, yeah, I mean, I could still, I still have that option to do Superman. Right. So, if I were you, I would have done like Superman. A Superman Star Wars mashup. Uh, yeah. I'd have to see what I would have to do. Or, or at least a Star Trek Superman mashup. What? <laughs> anyway, but yeah. Oh. Either way, it, well, it sounds like it's going to be a fun time. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, my friends at work are looking forward to it. My daughter's looking forward to it. I, it sounds like, like there's going to be a there's going to actually be a big blowout. Uh, I'm, I'm, hope, I'm hoping it is. This is going to be pretty cool. Um, I think I think with each year that goes by, more and more people are like, man, we missed the first one. Let's check this out. Yeah. Hey, guys, I was there the second year. It was rocking. Come with me this year. Each year, it seems like more and more people are showing up. And right. They're, they're starting to realize this isn't a flash in the pan. This is a thing that... We're going to keep it going as long as, as the good Lord allows us to. And good and Lord allows us and sin us in The city of Perth doesn't end up killing us. Uh, I, would, I wouldn't mind seeing it get so big that the whole town gets in it like like like, uh, like they do Mayfest or whatever. I would love to uh, see that. To see it where the park center is where they hold this, but, but they've got a parade and they've got like superhero days. and That would, that that would, that would be kind of cool. You know, and then yeah, that I would love to see. I would love to see it get that big, and then everything that goes on all across town <coughs> goes towards those charities. That would be. Yeah. That would be. That would. That would. That would be. <coughs> that would be what do we got? Uh, what do we got on uh, any comments or anything? Anybody saying hi? Uh, uh, well, Dom I mean, said we can tickets. We can get back. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, we can get back into the conversation of Superman and his long hair. <laughs> the bullet. No, no, no. <laughs> no, not this time. <laughs> that was kind of scary. <laughs> I'm double checking with our lovely lady that sings the national anthem. Awesome. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, but yeah, it's one of the things that we, uh, no, you know, I've always, you know, it's one of those things that this, those books, what pretty girl are, uh, real big and near and dear to me. So, uh, and those are actually the newest ones. Uh, we'll go get that. And yeah, I had to open them so I could see all the new stuff. Uh, the cool thing about it is this one here is the hardback. Uh, just come out. It's the 30th anniversary edition, deluxe edition. Uh, runs. Go get Tessa. Go get Tessa. Go upstairs. Uh, I believe about 40 bucks. Uh, but the cool thing about this is after the uh, after the main story, there is another story in there. Uh, there's a couple other stories that's in there, but then it gives cliff notes about what the what you know, reading and Jurgens and you know all of them did 
uh, you know, in the process of making the death and life of uh, the death and return of Superman. And again, you've got that smaller one, and then you've got, or as everybody calls it, my doorstop. Uh, and if you can see that, with good reason, uh, if you can see that, yes, that is. It's a, about three inches thick. That is a huge book. Uh, and again, it's got uh, the full, all the comics. It has the uh, the newspaper articles. It's even got a couple other stories in it that uh, were never released. It was in the eyes of, like, there's one comic, that, and it's basically in the eyes of Mom and Paul Kent. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I, it's an awesome read. Uh, you know, yeah. it's one of those things. Uh, the Death of Superman book back in 1993, the uh, reason why it holds so near and dear to my heart is because that was the comic book. That was the first ever comic book my dad ever bought, me, and it was the graphic novel. Right. So, uh, so you know, you know, it was one of those things. And uh, the first time go to, uh, going to uh, another reason why we love, I, I love going to Metropolis is that that's just something that uh, my dad always wanted to do was take me to Metropolis because of how much I loved Superman, and uh, right. he did the same. He did too. Uh, so, you know. But he never got to take me. Right. And when I found out that a couple of the artists were going to be at Metropolis, I took my original version of the graphic novel, the one that my dad gave, it, gave me. I took it down there, and it, it has been signed a couple of times by the different, by those actors, or not actors, but by those artists. Right. And uh, so that there. That's, uh, I don't care, I could have, you know, action comic number one, which I've got a couple issues, uh, but that right there, out of all of my comics, that there is probably my holy grail, that there is the one that, you know, I, whatever happens in my collection could happen, that there is my, my piece, I've got Stanley's autograph. Right. On a comic book. Right. Uh, you know, but that one right there, because of the sentimental value of it, that one there means pretty much everything, more than any of the other comic books in my, in, in my, in my collection. You can ask Dennis. I've got a pretty good collection. That's <laughs> pretty sized. <laughs> and it grows every week. <laughs> I mean, I just don't have room to set up something. I need my own little building, and then, yeah. But, yeah. I got mine all packed in boxes and, and whatnot, and it's just like, ah. But yeah, it's not a mullet, it's long hair. Uh-huh, okay. I showed you in the comic book, it's literally, blah, it, it's not, okay, okay. It's brushed back, and yes, it's got a little bit of the wave still in front, but it is all long. His hair is curly. Uh-uh. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, What's that? Oh, no, no. no. <laughs> I agree, I agree. You saw it. You saw it. Elder abuse. <laughs> Ancient abuse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my man. goodness. Anyway, yeah. Now, somewhere in my collection, uh -huh. uh, it's not as thick as that one. But it is pretty thick, and it's the nightfall side. Right. And I gotta find that thing. I gotta find that thing. If it's in my stuff over at my ex-wife's place, I'll never get it back. I need to find that such a rare Yeah. It's just uh well just yeah. ask her for it. She's got a shed out there. She's not gonna go through that thing until she has it. Ask her. I'll you ask her. Through. Well, she'll probably want me to clean it. Now, I'm not going to do that. Well, <laughs> see, that would be a good. That would be a good reason for you to go and get your comics. Yes. I well, I know where 99 percent of them are. I have them. Okay. I just, I'm but just gotta, that one. I gotta go. 
Well, see, it, that would be yeah. the perfect reason to say, hey. See, see, he's got he's got all his comics in the sleeves, and he's got them in boxes, he's got them, he's got them in numerical order, he's got them alphabetized, he's got, he's got the whole thing. Whereas mine is There's all over the place. They're just all stacked in, in boxes and fit. Oh, you mean like on the table and what I got on my graphic yeah. table? Yeah, so it's just more like that <laughs> than that, you know. So, but yeah, it's uh, but yeah, the first, strangely enough, the first comic book that I ever that my dad ever bought me was a Superman comic book. Now, see, mine was Batman, and my older brother bought it for right. me. Right. Yeah. And I guess I now. Do you still have yours? Not the Superman. No. no. Okay. But the first Batman one that did. I still have my first comic book that was ever bought for me. Mm. And it's signed. Well, I had my comic books. Yeah. But. Well, hold on. When yeah, I I'm, into, listening. I'm listening. When I went into the military. Right. My mom went into my oh, room. Oh, sorry, guys. I'm not trying to. My mom went into my room after I'd gone huh. to the military. Miss Karen has us on her calendar. Awesome. Well, how's that? I'm going to turn on one light. How bad did that blind you? Ew. Well, give me a second. Give me a second. Uh, it's all. It's all right. I mean, but uh, but yeah. The uh, my mom started shifting a bunch of my comics, so it got lost in the shuffle. And uh, yeah, just just don't turn it around to show what I'm doing. And I had the first eight comics. <laughs> I had the first eight comics of the Spider-Man run, and those got oh, tossed. cool. And those got oh tossed. man, tossed. Yeah, she tossed them while I was in the military. Needless to say, I was not. Mom happy. did. Mom did. Oh no, mom. Yeah, <laughs> she didn't know. That's uh, uh, all right. Um, got somebody else that's joined us. I just have no idea who it hey, is. Hey, how's it going? Yes, I am looking. I will. I've almost got it. One more box. <laughs> there was a Batman comic. Huh? It is a Batman comic. Just give me a second. Hold on. I can pretty much tell you. Uh, some of my favorite issues, like for instance, the yep, first sit right there. The first Brave and the Bold I ever got was Batman working with with Supergirl. How bad is? Uh, can we still see? Uh, I'll, uh, right here, and it, it is signed. It, Dennis, it, you it, got it, a white line going down your forehead. Dennis does. Yep, yeah. Dennis does. Okay. Uh, Again, I just pulled it out. This comic book is from 1989. Right. My first ever comic book that was ever bought for me. I actually had it signed by uh, artist Mark DiCarlo. Okay. Uh, awesome. Uh, now, uh, also worked on, uh, uh, worked in his, some of the biggest stuff was Batman uh, because he did a lot with the Jason Todd right. character Robin. Right. Death in the Family right. was his big area, um, which I also have several comics for that. Mm -hmm. But this one here, the first comic book that was ever bought for me, again, my older brother uh, bought it for me, was uh, Batman. Uh, it was called Bat uh, Batman number 435. It, is, uh, part it was part three of three, and it's called The Many Deaths of Batman. Uh, I don't know, but this is my original, this is the first ever comic book that was ever bought for me. And my older brother bought it for me. So, yeah. Oh yeah, I've got one of those too. Uh, but, and then finally, uh, after several years uh, of looking, uh, again, this is a book three, this is uh, part three of three. Uh, after several years of looking, uh, I was able to get a hold of uh, one of the comic book dealers that I go through, and he was able to find me parts one, two, and another copy of three. So I actually have the full set of the of this. 
and there's the comic book. This in here is my first. Uh, this one here is my first ever comic book. So I, I thought that. Uh, so yeah. So you know, I have no idea how much it's worth or anything like that, but. Well, it's priceless in terms of sentimental value. Right? Exactly. So, so yeah, that is my first. That is my first ever comic book. Uh, that is the first ever comic book that was bought for me. So like, you know, my Superman comic book that I got was an action comic, and uh, I mean, and just think that action comic that you could have had still to this day with you being older than dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Where is that stick? Where is that stick? <laughs> it would probably work. You could probably buy you a new house with it. The, the story, the storyline was that Superman would fly to these events like, you know, getting the key to the city or whatever. Right. And now all of a sudden he'd start fighting and nobody could see who he was fighting. But it turns out that there was a... There was a being that lived on an electron, on an atom, and he found a way to make himself so big that he grew to, to Earth standard size. Uh -huh. okay. But because of the nature of his physiology, only Superman could see him. And he was going to attack people, and Superman was fighting him off. And everybody was like, what is up with Superman? Is he turning to a dipstick? What is he doing? He's, no. he's fighting. Well, eventually he figured out a way to hit him with, with his heat vision and cause him to be able to be seen. And everybody realized that okay, Superman, wasn't, Superman crazy. wasn't sniffing uh, kryptonite dust or, you know, cocaine or whatever. You know, he actually had something on. And I don't know why that story stuck with me, but now I was like, well, you guys gave me some other stuff, so they, yeah. And this was around Christmas time, so right. I made them little stocky stuffers. And I just sort of got into Batman at that point, and, and it's just like, you know. Well, now that story right there, the reason why it's called The Many Deaths of Batman is because there's, uh, it's not necessarily a pot, well, uh, they've got a guy that's going around Gotham killing right. imposters. Right. Of Batman, and you know, it's their claim that it's actually Batman that he's killing, but then lo and behold, they pull the mask off. Oh my god, look, it's Batman. Whoa, he's so and so. But lo and behold, Batman swoops in, here comes Commissioner Gordon. It's like, uh, that wait a minute. yeah, that's not him. So, you, basically, it was a serial killer on killing everybody, uh, basically, anybody that dressed up as Batman for like a whether it be a convention or doing this or that, right. that you know, right. this guy was killing, they kill him off. And yeah, then Batman had to stop the serial killer. Right. So. What, what's funny is, you know, Bruce Wayne's not the only one that's ever been Batman. Right. Every time somebody else has gone the cow or whatever and met with Commissioner Gordon, they may look like but that but, Commissioner Gordon And they may knows. even sound like him, but even Commissioner Gordon doesn't. Who, I don't know who that guy is. He's, he's reasonably close, but that's not him. Like with Dick Grayson, that's not that's Yeah, not what him. happened to, what's that, happened to Batman? John Paul well, Valley, well, that's, not, that's not him. I don't know who this guy well, is, but I don't like him. And, you know, yeah. But, which then lends itself to the year one storyline where, you know, he's handing... Commissioner Gordon has his baby after it got tossed off the bridge. Uh -huh. Remember that? Okay. And he's like, I can't, I can't see anything without my glasses. And he's like, I think he could. I think, oh, yeah. I think he knows. <coughs> and I, yeah, I was going to say, I think Commissioner Gordon deep down knows it's Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Uh, in, in fact, in fact, he's too good a cop. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, you, know, <coughs> you know, even it, you know, it. it, it even if you watch the Gotham TV show, and at the end of the last show, you know, you know he knows that that's oh, always yeah. out there. He knows. Well, you know, he, and I mean, you know, everybody, all, you know, will take and take for instance the Superman. Uh, you know, Superman. Uh, everybody's like, oh man, uh, it, it's Superman. How you know, glasses? 
and changing your hair style, uh, you know, people are going to know what you do. Uh, you know, but here's the thing. You know, a lot of people turn around, oh, oh man, Clark Kent, Superman. You know, what the, the thing that gets, uh, you know, there's different, era, uh, you know, uh, uh, things in play with, uh, with Clark when he puts on the glasses and does and changes his form from Superman to yeah, it's not just it's not just taking it's not just taking the glasses off and parting his hair the hair the other direction. He also slumps. Uh, he slumps. He's, he's got a little bit of a poo that he's got that almost dad bod when he's Clark. Right. Uh, you know, but here's the other thing. The a lot of people don't realize the glasses are made out of a material from uh, part of the materials from his ship. They're not just normal store-bought glasses that he can throw right. on. Uh, and also, uh, and Flash actually took this part from Superman. Mm -hmm. uh, the Flash uh, to where the foe, Barry, if, uh, you know, uh, Barry wants to disguise himself because he's, because he didn't have time to change or whatever like that. Uh, his suit where he super vibrates, Superman does that when he's in Clark, as Clark. A lot of people don't know that. That's a story a long. T that's a story from a long time ago that people have forgotten. Now I remember the Man of Steel when they they were like, "How come every time we take a picture of Superman, it looks like he's blurry?" That's and the that, reason. That's that, because they don't want you focusing in on his features right. enough that you can. So and oh, to, the, hey. to the so to the normal person, whether or not glasses or whatever it is, you know they look at you. They when they look at Superman, you know Superman does that hypersonic vibe, even though that it looks, even though it, but he knows how to control it enough that he can hug Lois before she knew that he was Clark, right. uh, where he can shake Jimmy's hand. To where it's not where he doesn't phase through him. See, a lot of people take Superman at being Clark Kent as you know oh, that's a stupid disguise. He does a lot to himself right. to change his appearance to where you don't know it's him. And the, and the comic books have gotten away. Uh, see, uh, have gotten away from it quite a bit uh, you know well think about this Superman and Batman are standing underneath the globe on the, you know the daily planet right? right okay they're looking out over the city and he's and Superman asks Batman he says do you think Commissioner Gordon knows he goes I don't think he knows I know he knows he's too good a cop not to know right he knows he goes what about Perry do you think Perry White and he said he's too good a reporter not to not to know. Right. And when well, you think about it, think about it. Yeah, Superman is able to type really fast and he's like but think think about Perry White is like the where only, is he where is he gone? He knows where the, he's gone. Well, the only problem with that, now probably back in the older versions of uh, of the Superman uh, series. Right. Uh, but in the current, when uh, when they took, uh, when Bendis took Superman's identity away from it, uh, away, right? Okay, and uh, where Superman did the press conference happened uh, just a couple years ago, where he did the press right. conference, hey, I'm Superman, I'm Clark Kent, and well, before when he was doing all that, when he was getting all of that arranged uh, to do the press conference. He, you know, he talked to us, uh, uh, Clark, uh, Kyle, Superman, whatever, uh, talked to the Justice League. There, there was a few opposed. Some was like, yeah, but go ahead. Uh, but here, but the thing was, is he went to Perry. He went to Jimmy. And they were both like, uh, uh, what? You're, they didn't know. Uh, and this is here. And this is in the recent comic book. Recently. This is fairly recently. Uh, and then you have uh, when they relaunched 
um, Superman just here recently, within the last month or so, within the last couple months. I've got the issue. Matter of fact, we talked about it. Right. Uh, where uh, Luther kills Manchester Black. Right. Okay. Uh, that issue uh, where when uh, Luther lobotomizes the world using Manchester Black as the pawn right. uh, to wipe everybody's memory of Superman and Clark being the same person, uh, Perry shows up to the Kent farm for a family dinner and Superman and Jonathan, Superman and John, fly in and they're still in. Now Superman and John have no idea that everybody's lobotomized other than a few certain people. Right. Lois, Ma and Paul Kent, uh, the Justice League. Um, but uh, as Superman swoops in, hey, how's everybody doing? Oh, Perry, you're here. Perry looks over and sees John and Clark and has a deadly brain aneurysm that they barely save Jonathan, or they barely save uh, Perry. Perry. So Perry does not recognize in modern comics since, you know, since after the convergence modern comics, Perry White doesn't know that Superman is Clark. So, who, do, who do we still have here with us? Yeah. I mean, we got, uh, what time is it? About quarter till. Quarter till? Okay. Yeah. That one is probably me. Okay. I don't know. Please say hi. Don't leave us. We love you all. We do. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for Karis this coming week. Yeah, I, I, she, 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 she. I wish my daughter would quit right. growing so that's, I could. That's the yeah. problem. That's the problem. My daughter, <laughs> my daughter, she's as big as she's going to get. And she, if she, if she gets any bigger, it'll be out this way. It won't be this way. Right. So, but. Uh, I think she, Tessa still has another growth spurt. I, yeah, we're I still think thinking she's Tessa's got another growth so spurt. If it's if she's anything like her dad, she's got at least one more tiny, tiny growth, growth spurt. Before, uh, before yeah. So, so, but, so we're still yeah. we're, we're, we've got a few ideas. She's got a few ideas on a few suits uh, that she wants to get into. Uh, so we're we're looking into that. So right. I can't wait to work. You know, because again, she's in that age right now. She does she does an awesome young Maleficent. Well, she could, uh, she could do she could do the Supergirl from the Flash film. Yeah, I mean she's got the dark hair. Yeah, cut it short. There you go. But uh, she uh, so yeah, I mean it's it's the it, her her costume ideas are endless. Uh, you know, and that might be a possibility for her because she looks about the same. For her, so I think that right. would look real good. Right. Uh, you know, but Karis, Karis said she came up to me and she said, "Dad, does does Bruce Wayne have a daughter?" I said, "Yes, he does have a daughter. He does." Uh, on Earth Two, her name is Helena, and she's that Earth's huntress. And she goes, "In your group, do you guys have huntress?" I said, "No, we don't." Found them both yeah. of us like the one that her mom would not go. Well, why is she dressed like that? That's a little risque. Right, right. It, right. Looks, it looks nice. And so we got it. Made a little bit of tailoring. Sent it off to Margie Kramer, to, who does a fantastic job. Yes, her she's daughter, her daughter support for me too. Her daughter, her daughter is a cosplayer extraordinaire herself. She's more into anime and stuff like that. Right. But, but. She worked on my Batman costume. And, you know, she worked on several of your costumes. Yeah, she worked on several of my costumes. She She's worked, worked on, on your Gambit. And, you know, no. so, and she <coughs> on Gambit. Well, she she got to looking at Karis. Karis tried it on, and she was like, "Okay." And 
we were like, how are we going to do this? How would she come up with some ideas on the spot? Let's do this, let's do that. And so when Karis tried it on today, I was like, when she's done, it's going to work. It's yeah. going to sharp. So Margie has always taken the time. And she's even, you know, she'll, you know, when she's doing it, she'll look at it and she'll go, you know, this might be a slight problem. I'll, I'll put this in. Like, for instance, on Huntress's pouches, with the way we have them affixed to the belt, mm -hmm. it was going to cause a sag in it. So she found a way to strengthen them and bolster them up so that they were not sag. She, and I was like, you know, that, you know, she was thinking, she was thinking ahead about how right. to do this stuff. I was like, I'm impressed, you know, because she, she really, she really put it out there. And, and Karis, you could, you could see the look on her face. Karis had kind of, she's kind of more of an introvert. She's, right. she doesn't like really getting out in front of people. Adrian's sort of the same way, you know, unless there's, you know, something good coming out of it. Right. She doesn't, she doesn't really want to be out in front of people where they can critique her and all this stuff. But, you know, since I kind of talked to her about doing some costuming, she has, she's opened up her creative floodgates and made some anime characters and she's done quite well. Yeah. And she has. And so she, she was like, I really want to do this actress. And. Hi, Tabitha. Hi, hey, Tabitha. Hi, Tabitha. When, when she put it on, she was like, she is so excited. She can't wait to show this this costume off, and I'm happy for her. Yeah. She's, I, it's, she has come so far for the longest while. She really didn't want to get out in front of anybody or right. anything, and, but because of her stretching her boundaries, like getting the job at, at uh, Burger King, and, uh -huh. and getting out among people, and doing the cosplay thing is she's, she's opening up more. she's opening up more she's kind of getting past that social anxiety and she's learning those coping strategies to deal with crowds of people uh -huh. who you know she doesn't feel like she's being judged so much anymore she's she's more out there and kind of interacting with people and she's starting to realize you know the world's not out the river it's you know right so and to be able to stand there and watch her. Like that one year that she did the uh, the, the SpongeBob spur paints. Uh-huh, I um, remember that. You know, I've gone there since 2006. I'm a known entity there. People come up and out, Dennis, got to get a picture for you. you know, oh yeah. I was like, you step back. I want a picture of SpongeBob. She had them lined up down the block. Yep. And she was like, this is what's go, what she feel. Yeah. yeah, and she goes, not after after she got through the line and everybody had their pictures taken with her, she was like, now I get why you do this because it's making people so happy. And she she was like, I love this. Yeah. I love making people happy. And she she goes, and everybody treated me so nice. And she goes, I, now, I, now I understand why you do this stuff. So yeah. I was like, good. Yeah. Now, now you're getting angry at it. So, yep. But, yeah, she's she's starting out simple, but she's she's jacking up her game, and I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if one day she comes up with a costume that is just so spot on that she blows us she, away. She makes us look like amateurs. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if that happens. That would be awesome. You know, and one of these, one of the, one uh, some time, some day, you know. It's going to get to the point to where, you know, Heroes for Kids hopefully goes and keeps going and going and going that we as, you know, us three as the uh, creators and organizers, the creators and founders of Heroes for Kids, you know, one of these days, you know, hopefully it gets to that point to where I can, where the three of us can turn around and go, we want to hand the keys over to the kingdom to somebody. Right, and I would love it. I would love for it to be our kids oh, well, yeah. uh, to keep it going. You know, right. that would be awesome. I, I could see. I, I could actually see Karis doing it. I can actually see Karis yeah. taking my spot. You know, yeah. I, I start stepping back, and I'm 
I'm the guy behind the desk and you know selling the stuff, but I'm not suiting up. She's suiting up. And you're the old. Uh, you're the. I'm. I'm. You're, you're almost to the old man way now. Yeah, aren't you? I'm almost to the old man. Yeah, but then I can start doing more like. Jim Gordon, or yeah, you know, uh, or uh, you're, the, you're the next Obi Wan Kenobi. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm the next Obi Wan Kenobi. You know, but uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if she goes that way. I would. Uh, that surprised. would be awesome. And I know Tessa wants. And I can already tell you right now, Je Tessa. Uh, you can ask Jess. Tessa wants to jump into it. You know, hook, line, and sinker as well. So, uh, right. Until right now, she wants to. She, uh, you know, there's days that, uh, where are you guys going? And it's like, well, we're doing this. Uh, and it's like, okay. She's like, she's waiting on that. That gross can I go? Dad, open. can I go? Dad, can I go? Uh, right. you know, uh, so, it, it, you know, but it's one of those things, uh, you know, we still travel so packed in the vehicle that, I mean, how many times have you had that, you know, hey, we're going to an event, can you bring Tesla with you? Because we're taking two vehicles, right? You know, because my vehicle's packed with everything, right? You know, uh, you know, it, 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 it's happened quite a bit, right? So, you know, uh, you know, I, I'm looking forward to Tessa, like I said, breaking out of that growth spurt finally, to where we can actually get her set up in a couple of costumes, to where Let's we don't talk have. About me. Yes, we are. <laughs> Uh, you know, that way we can, you know, that way she can get into that day to day, you know, come out in that costume more. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, because she's she's already got the bug of sitting behind the table. Can I test uh, You know, she's already got that bug of sitting behind the table and, uh, you know, doing the artwork thing. Well, you know, think about think about this. You draw, right? I used to, yeah. Yeah, I used to. I, I used to draw. I don't draw as much as I used to. But I used I to pick up a pencil and every I, once in a while. And I, I'm still fairly decent at it. You know, now our kids are picking up the pencils and they're doing the drawing. We've literally become the living work of art. We walk yeah. around doing the living work of art. They're starting to get into that yeah. as well. So, her, she's still more in the paper and pen kind of thing. And Karis is more in the computer graphic right. kind of stuff. But I. I have no doubt that eventually we're going to see our daughters suiting up and they'll be like, Dennis, Lonnie, just, you're done. Go, Dad, you're, done. you're over there. You're saying you're over there. Watch. Yeah, watch us, watch us shine. And I'll be like, okay. okay. <laughs> We'll be sitting here in the chairs if you need us. Well, uh, uh, and on good no on more good notes, let's uh, flip it because I think we're getting close to the nine o'clock here. Oh, uh, nine o'clock time. Right. In fact, we're right eight fifty nine. Okay. Uh, well, let's go ahead and close up uh, unless anybody's got any questions or anything. So uh, I do want to say this. Uh, well, go ahead, Jess. Do you have anything? No. No, Dennis. Um, Hopefully, we'll see all the friends of Metropolis and have a good time. And at the uh, Spring for Down Syndrome on Saturday. So. Right. We uh, have tickets still available. Sponsorships still needed. Individual. Did she just say that she didn't have anything to say? He started talking before I could finish. Just, uh, uh, just uh, go with the fact I'm right. They're not. You're. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing, okay, Jeff, hold on, nothing event wise. Okay, Jess, do you have anything else that you would like to present? Tickets are available for purchase on our website. Sponsorships are available. We could still use sponsorships to help us surpass our goal and to help. These two are going to die before this is over. <laughs> At least they're going to wish they were. Okay. We are looking for business and individual sponsorships. Oh, uh, did I say anything else to add? No, I pretty much covered it. You pretty much covered it? Okay. Uh, again, want to thank everybody. And uh, just to give everybody a heads up, we've been telling you guys for several months that we are working on a YouTube page. We have our YouTube page up and running. We're going to start downloading our... Well, we, we have it up. We have it up. 
Uh, we're we're going running, to running's a little loose right at the moment. We're going, getting ready to start adding content uh, here, hopefully within the next couple weeks. We're going to go to some of our backlog stuff and download some of our stuff onto our Heroes for Kids uh, YouTube page. And some of the, uh, within at least the last 30 days of uh, some of our meetings, that way if somebody wants to go back and re uh, listen to something that we've done, uh, we'll have those on our YouTube page, uh, and hopefully at least that uh, is we what can we're actually attending. start going live on our YouTube page as well right. when we do our uh, videos uh, from when we do our Facebook lives on uh, for that. That's still good ways out. That's still good. We're still working we're on working some. On it. Yeah. We're still working on a few things, but uh, so uh, on that note, like Dennis said uh, and Jess said, we're looking. We're still looking at sponsors uh and uh you know whether it be individual or businesses we want to not only surpass our uh surpass our goal but we want to beat our record uh so uh please any and all uh donations help uh also come out and uh, hang out with us this weekend down in metropolis uh at the superman celebration and in saint jen at the uh, Spring for Down Spring Syndrome. Spring for Down Syndrome. It is located now, the one in Spr uh, the Spring for Down Syndrome in St. Jen is, I believe, held at the fairgrounds. I believe it's at the St. Jen Fairgrounds this year. Yes. yes, so it's actually gotten big enough to where it is at the St. Jen Fairgrounds this year. So looking forward to hanging out with people in both places this weekend. Uh, and on that note, uh, we look forward to seeing everybody also july 15th at the heroes for kids comic con here in perryville missouri so uh, check out our website at heroes for kids comic con dot org and on that note love you all have a good night thanks for the support thank you for the support